Church of Christ located in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to welcome you to Tuesday's edition of Walking Through the Bible, a podcast where we seek to study the Bible and the Bible alone. Please stick around afterwards for information on how you can contact us. But for now, if you have a Bible with you, please turn to the book of Genesis and we'll turn you over to Jeremy Dieselkamp for our study of the day. Thank you, James, and welcome to all of our viewers. This is the 36th lesson in our study of Genesis. Yesterday, we covered Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 to 7, discussing God's commands concerning procreation and the eating of meats. If you missed that episode and would like to watch it, you can find it and all of our other podcasts on our website at www.eastendchurch.org. You can also find them on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Christ under the Walking Through the Bible Genesis playlist. Today we're going to begin with Genesis chapter 9 verse 8 and read through verse 17. The text that you'll see on the screen is from the English Standard Version, but you're welcome to follow along with any version that you have. So let's now read Genesis chapter 9, beginning at verse 8. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, it is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign, the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. God had promised Noah and all living things at the end of chapter 8 that he would never again destroy the earth in a flood. In chapter 9, he ratified this covenant. A covenant is not a contract where one party will do something if the other party does something. No, a covenant is a solemn promise to perform what you have vowed regardless of what the other party does. Marriage is a form of covenant. When two people get married, they covenant with each other that they will forsake all others, that they'll be faithful to each other, that they will love, cherish, and honor one another in sickness and in health, for richer or for poor, for better or for worse, until death do they part. Notice that in that vow no mention is made that the husband would love the wife as long as she loved him back. No, he vowed to love his wife no matter what until death. The sign of this covenant is the ring that both spouses wear. A ring doesn't have to be the sign of a marriage covenant, but such is common in Western society. God established his covenant in Genesis 9 with Noah and all of Noah's offspring, as well as with every creature. In other words, this covenant would outlast Noah. The promise was that God would not again destroy this earth with a flood, no matter how sinful man became. The sign of this promise was God's bow in the clouds, affectionately called a rainbow. God said when he brings the clouds over the earth and the bow is in the clouds, God will remember his covenant with the earth. Again, it's not saying that God was going to forget the covenant, but it is saying that he would perform his vow and that man could be assured of it. A rainbow in the sky is a beautiful thing, something we don't get to see every day. I have never met anybody who doesn't like to see a rainbow or isn't impressed with its beauty. The rainbow, however, is not just the reflection, refraction, and dispersion of light in water droplets. 
It is a sign of God's covenant with us established at the time of Noah. Let's be thankful to God for his grace and mercy in being willing to not destroy this earth again in a flood. But let's also be warned, just as we said in Lesson 40, God will destroy this earth on the judgment day, 2 Peter 3, verse 10. But that destruction will be by fire and not by water. That destruction will be total, leaving no earth or universe behind, while the flood of Noah's day only destroyed the living beings found on this planet. God is gracious and he is merciful, so let's determine to worship and obey him while we live on this earth. With that, our time is up for today. Please join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we will continue our study of Genesis, beginning with Genesis 9, 18. Thank you, Jeremy. And to our viewers, we also thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Should you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below or email us at answerintheword at gmail.com. We'll try to respond to you as quickly as we can. We hope you'll join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we'll be continuing our study of the book of Genesis. Goodbye for now and have a great day. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord.